Hi, this is Greg from the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team, and today we're going to talk about the New Tech Green Pro. We're going to get into setup and operation. So let's get started. So a few things before we get started on the site requirements. You're going to need 208 to 240 volts. You're going to need a water source of, with a flow rate of one gallon per minute. In our case, we're using the Rio RC10, which is a closed loop uh, cooling system. And finally, you're going to need uh, either nitrogen or argon cover gas with an approximate pressure of about 60 PSI. OK, so first thing to get started is we're going to turn on the power back here. And then you can hear the, uh, the pump starting right away. And if you come over here, you'll see the water pressure starting to build up. It should get up to about 60 PSI. And the gas is already on, so we're about ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to notice is your power percentage on the display. You want to set it at 100. Uh, here's the set temperature. Right now it's in Celsius. And this is the actual temperature that it is at the moment. Now you'll notice that both gauges are indicating and working. The one on the right is for the water. The one on the left is for the gas. Now let's get into the crucible chamber and make sure everything's OK. But before we do that, I'm going to unplug the thermocouple because I don't want it to get stretched out when we lift it up. And you'll notice when I unplug it that the display is going to change because now it's an open circuit, it's not giving feedback. Then we can now lift it up. You can actually use either button on either side if you're left-handed or whatever, it doesn't matter. And we're going to go all the way up. Okay, so with the Grain Pro you can do two types of graining. You can do a continuous graining where you're adding in old trees and scrap and it just continuously creates grain. Or you can do a single batch which you can alloy and add your components and it'll stir and mix it and then you can lift the rod and the grain will come out nice and perfect for that particular alloy. Uh, right now we're going to talk about continuous graining so some of the things that we have to set up specifically for that are we have this special uh, thermocouple which has this little dog leg in it. Then we have the crucible and you'll notice this hole. This is why the thermocouple has this bend, because it goes in there and doesn't interfere with the uh, sealing rod like for single batch. Also on the continuous graining, you'll notice that the crucible has got five holes in the bottom. On the single batch, it's got three holes. So that's a big difference. But right now we're going to do a continuous, so I'm going to put this in. And then I'm going to put this back. I have to make sure that the stopper goes down. One last thing I want to talk about, in the bottom of the crucible is this little disc called an auto valve. So it sits down flat, and what it does is it keeps the liquid metal separate from the solid metal. So as the metal melts and turns into a liquid, it goes underneath the valve and drips out through the holes and comes down into the water. It's an actual valve that keeps it separate. Okay, so one of the things I did when I put the crucible in here for continuous graining, you've got this hole for the thermocouple. Uh, you want to make sure that's in about the 3 o'clock position because that will line up as we go down. I'm going to go ahead and lower it a little bit and then get it started. And get it in there and then we can lower it the rest of the way. Okay, so for single batch graining, you're going to want to use this crucible, which has three holes, which is different than the other one, which has five. And you're going to use the sealing rod with a straight thermocouple. Next, we want to get the gas flowing in the upper and lower chambers. We want to set it between four and five. Okay, so now we're going to put in the pan. We're just going to slide it in. And it's a little bit loose, but that's why we're going to start tightening. You'll feel it actually come up as you do that. Next, we're going to turn on the water pump. You can see it's already coming. And that's not quite enough. So I'm going to tighten it down a little bit. This is how you adjust the water flow. 
Ideally, you want it to actually overflow a little bit just like that. That's perfect. Next, we're going to set the temperature. And we're going to be doing some sterling silver, so I'm going to set this to 1060. Make sure the power is at 100% and hit heat. Now we're just waiting for it to heat up. When you're doing a single batch, you will add the metal two thirds of the way full up the crucible. And when it's melted, you'll need to lift the sealing rod and then purge or clean out the crucible and drain holes. If you need to do another batch after the first one, just make sure that the sealing rod is all the way down and covering the hole. Okay, so now that we're done graining, the last thing we wanna do is we wanna use the empty crucible button to kind of blast it with some uh, gas to clean out any residual metal or, or uh, clean out the little holes for draining and I'm going to do that now. I'm going to hit that a couple times. If you don't hit hold down you can see it could pop open. You'll also notice that there's uh, a little blast of water going on at the same time. Okay as a final step we recommend letting the temperature get down to 300 degrees or 600 Fahrenheit before you want to turn off the cover gas. That'll help uh, preserve the crucible on all the graphite consumables. Uh, and 150 degrees before you turn off the water, that'll help protect the electronics. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions, contact us.